What's going on guys? It's really dealy to the tutty wuddies here. Okay, I need to start over. What's going on guys? Real Touch GML here back with another Java tutorial and today we will be continuing on our Java game development series. And today we are actually going to be drawing to our screen. So if we went ahead and played um okay. Hold on. There we go. If we went ahead and played our game now, as you can see, it's just a blank window uh and we are getting massive FPS here. So we are going to actually implement some buffers and uh some buffer strategies. Um, so yeah, what we're going to be doing, uh, I should explain what a buffer is. A buffer is, or a buffered image at least, uh, instead of displaying your image right off the bat, it will actually buffer or load the image uh, before it, uh, you know, projects it and, and renders it so you can see it. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a private buffered image, just call it image, and we're going to equal a new buffered image. And what we're going to do here is we're going to say width, height, and buffered image dot type int RGB. <clears throat> okay. So basically, what this does is uh, it buffers our. It's going to buffer our whole window. Uh, so that's why it needs the width and the height parameters here. And we are going to be able to access the RGB, which is red, green, blue, for those of you that don't know. Um, so, yeah, that's basically all we have to do for that. And uh, going with our sprite sheets and stuff like that, we will be using buffered images. I don't think there's going to be one time where we're not going to use a buffered image. So, we're going to go ahead and we're going to go down to our render method here. Now, remember, this render method is called as much as it wants. Uh, the tick method is what gets our 60 ticks here. Okay, so in our render method, what we're going to do is we're going to create a buffer strategy. And a buffer strategy basically handles all the buffering behind the scenes. So we're going to say buffer strategy, we're going to call it BS equals this dot get buffer strategy. There we go. Now, if we go ahead and import this here, um, when we refer to this, we are actually referring to um, the canvas class here because we extend it, so we inherit it. So when we say this, um, it is actually accessing this from our canvas. Uh, now, uh, get buffer strategy actually returns a buffer strategy used by by uh, by this here, and um, it will return null if a buffer strategy has not yet been uh, created. Basically, so with that being said, all we have to do, or okay, so let me back up here. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. We we initialize it here, right? But we ha haven't actually created the buffer strategy. We've just initialized it. So what we need to do, since we know that the information here that get buffer strategy returns null if it hasn't been created yet, since this render method goes so many times per second, millions of of times per second. Um, we actually want to uh, just initialize it once and then we're done. So we're going to say if bs equals equals null, right? So then we can create the buffer strategy. So create buffer strategy. It's as simple as that. We're going to put in three here. Then we can return. So, all right. We're creating the buffer strategy, but now what does this parameter mean? Three. Well, I'm actually going to open up paint here. Try to explain this just a little bit. Um, so this three means we're going to have three buffers. So say this is our screen here, okay? This is our screen, you know, we got all the stuff happening here. But behind the scenes, behind that screen, just say, look at your monitor, and behind that monitor, Pretend like there is a image loading up, right? It loads up, and then once you're good, once it's loaded and this is done being projected, it's going to shoot this to the actual monitor, right? That would be double buffering. But since we want to implement triple buffering, we're actually going to put a third buffer behind that buffer. So it's actually loading up before the uh, you know, before we even get to the second one, if that makes sense. 
So it's kind of like loading two images back from what it needs to right now, which is going to increase speed over time. Um, so yeah, basically we would only access this here if our computer is fast enough and has time so that it's it's projected this, it's loaded this, and if it still has time before it has to shoot this over here, it's going to load this as well. So technically you could put 30 here and it would create 30 buffers. That wouldn't actually be, um, you know, doing any good though because there, there would really you can't really get a computer fast enough to load 30 buffers at one time. Um, so usually three is good, and if you put 30, it's going to you know use more CPU usage and and all that stuff. So uh, I would recommend going with three. If you don't want three and you only want two, that's fine. Uh, again, three increases performance, not too much, but it's always good to have. And it's, we're not going out of our way or anything. All you have to do is slap three in there. Okay. So now what we're going to do, since this equals null, there are, this is not going to equal null anymore because we actually create the buffer strategy. So what we're going to say is graphics g equals bs dot get draw graphics. We can import graphics here. And what this does is it creates a graphics context for uh, drawing buffers. So basically, it just draws out our buffers. Um, in yeah, we can now use this g variable as our graphics, um, which um, yeah, you can read that here. Da 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 da. Basic rendering operations. Blah blah blah. Anyways, now with our buffer strategy up here, we have to dispose of it somehow. Um, Yeah, we have to dispose it. If we don't dispose it, next time it loops around, it's going to be null again. Uh, and disposing it basically uh, just get rid of everything. Just get rid of it. We don't want it anymore. So all we have to do is say g dot dispose, and then bs dot show, which is going to show out our buffer strategy. Um, now basically, that is our rendering method there. Anything in between this and this we can draw out stuff. So we can say g.drawImage and we can say our image at 0, 0. We're going to be using a get width method here just to get the width of our screen and get height. And we can say our image observer to this. And if we run it now, we get a black screen. And now our FPS is around 2000, which is a ton less than uh, 8 million. So go leave a like, go and subscribe. This is basically how to render um, or our rendering method that we're going to be using. Uh, next tutorial we can actually probably start getting into our sprite sheets and um, you know creating our player and all that stuff. So go leave a like, go and subscribe. I will see you guys next time. Make sure to follow me on Twitter, link in the description, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.